The AVR X4500H is one of the higher end receivers from Denon, capable of decoding Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and IMAX enhanced content. And I've had it in my home theater for a few months now. And during that time, I've used it with everything from Helios Audio for your entire home to comparing some of the top HDMI 2.0 and 2.1 TVs of the year. And in this video, I'll tell you my thoughts about it and how it performed during that time. Stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and all around tech lover. And on this channel, we bring you the tech of entertainment. So we do unboxings, demos, comparisons, tips, as well as real world reviews of the tech that entertains you, like receivers like this. So you can find the best devices and get the most out of them. So if you're new here, then hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. So the receiver is the brains of your home theater. It's the device that you use to connect all your HDMI and legacy input devices to your screen. So it provides an amplified external sound to those devices while giving you the ability to switch between them whenever you'd like. Think of it as the rancher responsible for corralling all those inputs through the metaphorical gate that is your screen. Wow, that is a really bad analogy, but anyways. The receiver of course supports 4K HDR pass-through of up to 60 frames per second, including HDR10 and Dolby Vision. The receiver has 8 HDMI inputs, 7 on the back and 1 on the front, 1 phono, 2 optical and a coaxial as well as other legacy inputs including component and RCA inputs. It has 3 HDMI outputs which includes a dedicated zone 2 port and one for a second monitor which mirrors the output from the main ARC port. I used that feature to split a single HDMI source so I could compare the Samsung Q90R QLED to the LG C9 OLED TVs and it worked flawlessly. As of this review in late 2019, there are no HDMI 2.1 receivers available, at least not to my knowledge, but this receiver supports some key HDMI 2.1 features like auto low latency mode and enhanced audio return channel for lossless audio from your compatible TVs connected through the monitor 1 HDMI port. It's a 9.2 channel receiver, which means the internal amps power 9 channels and has 2 subwoofer outputs. You can configure these 9 channels in various Dolby Atmos or DTSX configs up to 5.2.4 or a 7.2.2 Atmos setup using just internal power but it can process a total of 11.2 channels. So if you pair it with an external amplifier, then you can expand your system to a 7.2.4 or use those extra two channels to run a pair of stereo speakers in a separate room. That's actually how I've been using this system, a 5.2.4 Dolby Atmos setup in this room and a pair of patio speakers in zone two powered by an external amplifier. The receiver has pre-outs for all the channels, so if you wanted, you could actually use an external amp to power every one of your speakers, but regardless of how you assign the amps, those last two channels have to be powered by an external amplifier if you want to use them. Speaking of power, the receiver sends 125 watts into 8 ohm speakers with two channels driven, and that's from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. On the front of the unit, you'll find the giant master volume knob on the right and a smaller source selection knob on the left. Both of them have smooth travel and the source selection is stepped, so you get some tactile feedback when you spin it to change the sources. Below the source control, you'll find the power button and to the right of that, there's a plate cover that hides the zone controls, quarter inch headphone jack and the Odyssey calibration mic jack. Odyssey Multi-EQ is Denon's room calibration software and there are different versions depending on the receiver you purchase. Multi-EQ, Multi-EQ XD, and Multi-EQ XD32, the most advanced version, which just so happens to be the one that this receiver comes with. It takes up to nine measurements of your room to calculate the speaker types, distances, levels, crossovers, and fine tune the frequency response. You can select whether you want the EQ to target a flat response, reference sound, or even have it bypass your left and right channel speakers altogether. 
There's even an Odyssey editor app in the App Store you can buy for $20 if you actually want to see the calibration results and make your own changes. I found that it does a pretty good job of detecting the kind of speakers and setting the levels. It does mess up sometimes though and configures my bookshelves as large speakers instead of small and then and receivers also have a tendency of setting subwoofer levels lower than it should be so I found myself having to go into the settings to adjust them. You should always go into the settings after calibration though to make sure that your speaker configs and crossovers are set to your liking. You can check out the video I made on finding the best crossovers linked in the card up there. That was a whole lot of spec talk and if I was supposed to cover all the specs of this receiver then we'd be here all day but nobody has time for that so I've left links in the description for any of you who want to check out the receiver or even purchase it. So now onto the good stuff, how I've been using this and how it performed. All my devices have been connected to the various TVs that are reviewed through the Denon. That includes everything from my Xbox One X to the PS4 Pro to the Apple TV 4K and the Sony X800 Mark II 4K Blu-ray player. One of the things that I really wanted to test was how well the receiver handles HDMI 2.1 TVs because there were already some on the market like the 2019 LG OLEDs. The receiver supports auto low latency mode and I tested it with the Xbox One X and the LG C9 and the TV properly detected the console, connected through the receiver and switched to game mode without issue. The receiver was also able to accept a lossless Dolby True HD audio signal over the enhanced audio return channel through the Xbox using it as a Blu-ray player connected directly to the LG C9 OLED. So all its touted HDMI 2.1 features that I tested worked without a hitch. So how does this receiver handle movies? Well, typically I have my front stage powered by the Outlaw Audio Model 5000 amp, which has 180 watts per channel into four ohm speakers like the Android Drones Design Pioneer Elite that I have. A four ohm load can be challenging on a receiver and as I like to do when I test speakers, when I tested this receiver, I ran the speakers at full range so I could really stress it and see how well it does and it handled it pretty well. Aquaman is a great movie for this kind of test since it had so much low frequency, especially in the fight scenes and low frequencies require a lot of power to reproduce and if the speakers aren't getting enough power, then the accompanying effects and dialogue can become muddy and somewhat distorted. That however was not my experience with this receiver. The receiver maintained the clarity of the dialogue while still recreating those mid and low bass notes of the battle going on with all the impact and effects that I expected to hear. While watching an atmospheric movie like Blade Runner 2049 for instance, the receiver handled the many dynamic shifts that happened throughout that movie very well. For example, in the Las Vegas scenes when the movie builds suspense with the quiet moments interrupted by gunshots or Elvis in the nightclub scene, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary in those scenes that would break my immersion. That said, the sound only started to get less dynamic and not as clear when I pushed the volume closer to reference levels during the more chaotic scenes. With all the speakers active, as the volume gets louder, so does the power draw and at that point it didn't perform as well as when I had my dedicated amp connected. But that's to be expected, I mean, even though this receiver is one of the most powerful in this class, an external amp is a dedicated power source for your speakers and a receiver by itself can only do so much. Considering the receiver was driving all 9 speakers in my setup during my test, with 5 floor level speakers and 4 in the ceiling, it performed very well. Do you need external amps? Certainly not, but hey, it has pre out so it's always an option. The receiver displays the power indicator beside the on-screen volume display to let you know its current power draw, so if you get a bit too crazy and push it a bit too hard, then it'll let you know. But regardless of how you use the receiver, the internals generate a fair bit of heat, so make sure wherever you place this you have adequate ventilation so the internal fans can do their job because it can and will get warm to the touch. It has two internal fans which must be either very quiet or just never come on because I have never heard them even with my ear up to it. The receiver of course supports all the object oriented sound formats and will automatically switch to the correct one depending on the input signal. And if you're playing a movie without height information then you can use the Dolby RDTX sound modes and the receiver will upmix the sound to make use of your height speakers. 
Environmental sounds like rain or aircrafts will also play in your high speakers, which is really great when you're watching older movies without Adobe Atmos or DTSX soundtrack. As for music, the receiver provides plenty of power for two-channel music playback and has a stereo mode which you can use to play in tandem with your subwoofer. Or there's the pure direct mode which does what it implies and disables the Odyssey EQ for a pure, uncolored playback experience. In the settings, there's even a two-channel specific bass management menu where you can enable or disable the subwoofer depending on how capable your speakers are. I actually really like that they included that in the settings because it means I don't have to go in the settings every time I want to play music to disable my subwoofer. I used it to disable the sub in the two-channel mode because that's just how I prefer to listen to music. The receiver is on the warmer side, so even if you have speakers that tend to be, say, a bit brighter, then I think it would still make a great pairing. So who is this for? Well, if you want a full-featured receiver that you can pair with the latest HDMI 2.1 TVs or just one that can handle a nine-channel Dolby Atmos setup without the need for an external dedicated amp but still want the room to expand in the future, then this could be the receiver for you. I mean, I would know, I actually bought its predecessor, the X4300H, in 2016, long before I made my first home theater video. Sound off in the comments and let us know your thoughts. What receiver are you running and are you in the market for a receiver? Is this one on your shortlist? Let us know. Thanks again to Denon for sending us out for a review. If you like my t-shirt and you haven't checked out the merch store yet, then you definitely should. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't for more home theater videos. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friend in the neighborhood villa man saying, peace.